Hey guys, some of my friends need to make a test and I was willing to make the test with them but at the end I couldn't so this video is to guide them about what do they have to do I have to keep the confidence of uh, which company, brand, product and all that so I'm going to just repeat here what they have to do there and I thought it was good to share with everybody because it's a good knowledge about how to troubleshoot uh, different kind of uh, issues we get in the switching mode power supplies. So the device is like nowadays everybody's device in one side is the box with what we have to do and externally we drive the power from one external switching mode power supply. In this case, this is just one example and I'm using one of my laptop's power supply. So this is what is the test about. There is here a power meter and the variable transformer. Supposedly, for my case, it is 19 volts here and 4.74 amperes output. For my friends, it's going to be probably a 12 or 24 volts adapter and 2 amperes output. But if we pay attention carefully, this switching power supply says it goes from 100 volts to 240 and the maximum consume will be 1.5 amperes in 50 or 60 hertz. On the other side, I got an electronics lot. And the point is, I'm going to make a voltage variation between the 100 volts and 240 and the power supply should keep the regulation uh, for my test example, it should be 4.75. Anyhow, I'm going to do it for 2 amperes. That is what my friends, they need to do. But when I turn this unit on, doesn't matter if I'm going to from 100 volts to 240 volts, it should keep the voltage regulation and the 2 amperes consume. That's the first stage of the test about. What else do we need to do troubleshooting when we get issues like my friends? Okay, here goes some advices. I'm using a clamp meter. I'm going to hold the maximum peak of current. So I will know if the peaking, the inrush current is very high or not. This line is part of the network and is what I'm hanging on. Previous to this stage, I already did a capture of the consume in the passive mode. And let me show you this. Using the Hitler Packard clamp meter, I got the following trace. This is what the current consume looks like. And it's okay, it's fine. We have the ups and downs and the compensation voltage to try to regulate that is the hill we are watching here, right? It's very visible to me from this angle, but you get the reflex of the light. I don't know if the, when I upload the video, the noise reduction system from YouTube maybe will reduce the, the effect. But let's see if you can watch it. Those peaks here, did you watch them? Okay, that's what we must look for because these kind of issues sometimes reflex 
in the second stage in the power supply or generate itself because maybe there is another switching power supply inside of the device and those are the noise effect that we have to troubleshoot in that gets everything upside down and not working as we expected. I'm, I'm glad I catch it here with this example because you can expect you're going to get that inside of the device in the next stage of power supply. So for my friends, the next stage is to cut the power supply from the adapter and to use a very huge power supply with the voltage regulation we require let me see if I can show it here with the voltage regulation we require but we have to give a lot of current this time and the reason why we give a lot of current is because the same that the other tester, we have to repeat it inside. We want to check if there is a very high consume of current. Sometimes we are limiting the current and it takes time to capacitors to charge. But we want to catch this peak of current to know what is the peak of current. So, we, let me illustrate avoid this power supply the same in the device we will take by the way the system is very like this kind and we will connect this power supply and kind of it we are going to repeat the current consume and kind of it we have to repeat to try to cache these peaks here in this section in our system when we get that we will know what kind of filtering do we need but most of these issues we have always a tendency to blame the coil and less than the coil with this kind of devices, this kind of voltage regulators, the most problems we get about is related with the capacitors, one or two capacitors and the internal resistance for it. So that's my best advice to troubleshooting more focus in this area than this other. Now let's come back to the video and let's do the voltage variation for the switching power supply adapter. So let me connect the two amperes consume. It's on. 2 amperes consume. Now I will make a variation of the voltage. For 240 volts, we have an average current of 227 milliampers. What we couldn't see here, we will watch down there. Did we say 200 milliampers? Surprise! The peak is 440.
and the voltage regulation keeps right. If something fails in this stage, we know the problem is here. If everything is right here, or at least we have the data information, what is the capability we can get from here, we can apply to the next stage. Let's remember inside of the device, we have other switching power supply like that. And we have to repeat the same test based in the capability of the output of the adapter here. And we will record now the new voltage current and variations and maximums and minimums we can supply or consume in the other side in the device, in the equipment we are testing. And that's the way to troubleshoot. About these guys, there is a kind of test we apply in radio frequency using a spectrum analyzer and LISN device to get this effect and to realize how many is the current we are getting in linkage and if that electromagnetic pulse is affecting the feedback pin in the voltage regulator. So I hope guys it will be worth it for you if someday you have to make a test like that and the knowledge is with us. Now we can apply it. Thanks for watching the video. See you next time.